Today's readings are Isaiah 52, verses 7 to 10, and Romans 10, verses 9 to 15. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Your watchmen shall lift up their voices, with their voices they shall sing together. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. Break forth into joy. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm. In the eyes of the nation and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach? unless they are sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. Thank you, Gwyneth. I pray for Steve as he comes to share uh, God's word with us. Father, we thank you for Steve. We bless you for the word that you've laid on his heart. We pray uh, that you would anoint his lips to us and our minds and our ears and our hearts uh, as we listen. So we bless you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Steve. Can we have the slides? Oh, yeah. So, if we, Oh, just a minute. Yeah. See if it works. Slide two. I turned it off and on again. Was that a mistake? I got the right way up. Operation. Ah, very good. It did. Do I need to hold it down harder or? Oh, that's not mine. (laughs) Just bear with us while we sort out the technology. Um, Maybe I'll just let you do it from the back. Because you've got the script, so so just advance. If we could go to the picture of the beauty contest, which is probably the third slide in. So all I want to do is ask, does anyone think that that's the one? Does anyone think they're beautiful? No, no, no. I think most of us are modest or humble or or not. Does anyone think they've at least got beautiful physique? Anyone go to the gym? No. Does anyone have beautiful hands or fingers? Does anyone got any nice fingernails here? No. No one voicing any beauty. So have the next slide, please. Does any of you think that you've got beautiful feet? I know I've got fungus on my toenails and they're not a pretty sight. And I felt sorry for those girls who washed my feet in Bangladesh. Um, And again, there's nobody putting your hands up, but we'll come back to this at the end. If we can have the next slide, please. 
Following Nebuchadnezzar II's successful siege of Jerusalem and invasion of the land, the people, particularly the rich rulers of Judah, were taken into exile to Babylon. And here's a map which kind of shows that journey that they took. And they were held captive until about 516 BC, a period of 60 years. And they're only released as a result of the Persian Empire defeating Babylon. It was during the period of exile that Psalm 137 was written. I've got to sing this. By the river. And sing with me if you like. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yeah, we wept. Where we remembered Zion. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight here tonight. How many years ago was that in the charts? <laughs> I think it was Boney M, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant song. Yeah, number one. But it's it's biblical, it's scripture, because they were in captivity and they really were weeping by the rivers of Babylon, by the Euphrates and the Tigris, which are somewhere there on the map. Um, I think I should get some new glasses. Um, how could they sing songs of joy whilst they were there, captive in a foreign land? They were weeping for Zion, for Jerusalem, for freedom from captivity, to be back in the promised land. And during this time of captivity, many prophets brought word of encouragement, words of a future freedom and restoration for Judah. We have prophecies from Babylon, written in the books of Daniel, Ezekiel, and Isaiah. And there are other prophets in Jerusalem, the prophets Habakkuk, Jeremiah, and Zephaniah. And the prophet Isaiah in chapters 40, 55, was living in exile in Babylon. And it's he who wrote our reading. We read earlier, Isaiah 52, 7 to 10, this powerful prophecy of a messenger to bring good news of peace. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. We don't often think of feet as beautiful, do we, as we've already seen. However, to a man or a woman in trouble, the person bringing help and salvation regardless of their looks, will appear as something of beauty. To a person drowning, a life boy thrown to them from a dirty old boat would appear as the most beautiful of sights. To a person dying of thirst, a cup of water, even in a chipped and stained old cup, would be most beautiful. And that's a lovely cup, so don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, the ill-shaven, the dirty and smelly troops who liberated the Jews from the Nazi camps. They would have been a beautiful sight to those who were held captive. And so to those in Babylon exile from Judah, who had lost all hope to be free, the one who announced to them peace, good news and salvation is beautiful right down to his feet. To the people in exile, this prophecy was a clear promise of good news, of peace, of salvation, of freedom from captivity. Whilst their enemies had boasted over their destruction, they were in time going to see that the God of Jerusalem reigns and is bringing about his plan. But this prophecy is also part of a bigger picture. 
Because what follows in Isaiah 53, if you remember, is the prophecies of the suffering servant, which couldn't be a more clear picture of what Jesus was going to do, of his life, his death, and his mission. Surely he took our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he, Jesus, was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has lain on Jesus, the iniquity of us all. Not only is Isaiah pointing the free, to the freedom of Jerusalem and the captives in Babylon, he's pointing to a Messiah who will pay the price for the sins of all mankind, for yours and mine. A greater salvation plan. The feet of the messengers who brought good news, salvation for the captives in Babylon, were beautiful. And they were precious. The people could return to Zion their greatest joy and sing songs to God and live in the holy land again, given to them by God himself. But the feet of Jesus were even more beautiful as they brought a message of good news, of peace, salvation, and freedom from captivity for all mankind. Do you not think prophetically that this verse is telling us that all those who bring good news of God's salvation in Jesus have beautiful feet? That each of us who walks towns, crosses mountains, crosses continents in partnership with God to share the love and good news of Jesus have beautiful feet? Yeah? Yeah? Any yeses? Any nods? Yes, definitely. Yes, I do. But I didn't want to take it a step further. Do you not think also that those who were walking behind, who were supporting, financing, enabling, and most importantly, in their closets, praying, that they too have beautiful feet? I do. Our second reading was from Paul's letter to the Romans, written whilst he was in the city of Corinth on his third missionary journey. And he certainly was a man with beautiful feet. And the date of this is considered to be about AD 58. Paul was gathering an offering from the Gentile Christians to help support the church in Jerusalem. And this is such a great example to us all of how the Gentiles were helping the Jewish Christians and very much in the way that we, the rich West, really have to help the churches who are poorer and suffering, particularly those in the 1040 window. In Romans 10, Paul says, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? How can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? Unless people are called of God, sent to share the good news, men and women will miss out on an eternity in heaven. And this is such a challenge for each of us to hear the call when we are being sent. And it's equally a challenge for each of us who are called to help and to support those who are sent. Because unless the church helps one another across the world, many will not hear the gospel. 
And Paul at the end goes on to quote our verse from Isaiah, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Without beautiful feet sharing the good news, the peace, the salvation message, how will they know? Both our readings are passages which inspire me and they lift my spirit. Do you know what I mean? They speak of messengers crossing mountains to share good news with beautiful feet. They make me want to sing songs of worship to God for the good news message itself and the way that God has saved each one of us in Jesus. They make me grateful and joyful for a man called David Wilcox, an evangelist who crossed mountains. In fact, it was the Mendip Hills in his car. He came and stood in a tent not far from my house when I was six years old, and he shared the good news of Jesus, which compelled me and my twin brother to respond to the altar call and to ask Jesus into our hearts. How would I know of our Saviour if he had not been sent? How would I know of our Saviour if I had not heard? I thank God for my mother who took me to that tent. If she hadn't taken me to hear the gospel, I may not have ever heard. And the joy on that evening, I still remember that joy of a new life, a new beginning, the presence of God's Spirit. It changed me then and it's changed me through my whole life. I was only six years old, but I was transformed. Behind every salvation story, somebody is stepping out in faith. Somebody is taking a risk. Somebody is crossing a mountain, crossing a boundary to bring good news. So that those who have not heard will have a chance to receive the most amazing gift they could ever receive. Some of us are more gifted than others in sharing our faith. Some of us are good one-to-one. Others are able to stand in church or in Zoom meetings and share the gospel. From the Great Commission, I believe we're all sent to share the good news. But we all have different gifts, different personality styles, which enable us to share the good news in quite different ways. And it may be some of us will never share the gospel with words. But our actions will demonstrate our faith in far more powerful and colourful ways because for the people who are lost on the streets it's not words and deep theology that they need they need the Lord they need Jesus and sometimes by actions by love and care which this picture I hope represents we share the love of Jesus in a more powerful way than a preacher might Some of us will be blessed to travel to other continents to bring the good news. Some of us, like the people in Corinth, will be resourcing through financial support. The church, this is the widow, the widow's might. The church in distant parts. Some of us will have the opportunity to share one by one with friends over coffee in Westbury High Street. Some of us will be called on our knees as intercessors. And praying is not just praying. Praying is powerful, it's world changing, it's calling on the resources of God and heaven to change things. Prayer is the most we can do. Some of us, like Andy from my church, 
We'll be using our gifts in carpentry, building, plumbing, maybe cleaning to bless and build the church. And some of us may be honored to preach the good news of Jesus Christ and be humbled as we see men, women, boys and girls' lives changed as they come to know their Savior who loves them so very, very much. And this thought to finish. Can I ask you again? Do you have beautiful feet? And so when someone asks you, what did you learn in church today? What will you tell them? We've got beautiful feet. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us feet. Feet to enable us to be sent. To enable us to go to peoples near and far with the good news of Jesus. Father God, we pray for your blessing on all our missional activities, that you would clearly lead us and provide for our needs. Father, we pray for your protection, for your provision, for your wisdom and your strength. And Father God, whether we're on the front line, whether we're supporting financially, whether we're behind closed doors interceding, Father God, may we never forget how beautiful our feet are in your eyes and in the eyes of those who will hear the good news of Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.